All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here, Changes and Challenges in Latin America. This is for our unit or the unit Democracy and Progress. Our objectives and standards to identify the difficulty that Latin America faced after independence, analyze the growth of the economy in Latin America, understand foreign policy by the United States in Latin America, and explain the involvement for the United States in the Cuban War for Independence. Take a moment here to read over the standards if you would, please. And our desired result, what troubles and transformations occurred in Latin America in the 1800s. So the colonialism legacy, remember that uh, Latin America does gain uh, independence from um, European powers and others. Um, and before independence and after it, most Latin Americans worked for large landowners. Uh, they were paid with vouchers that could only be used at supply stores that were owned by the landowners. Prices were high, wages were low. So workers wind up going into debt. Landowners, however, continued to get wealthier. Now, new Latin American countries had governments that took lands owned by native people. They also took land that had been controlled by the Catholic Church. The governments then put these lands up for sale. And because these workers were paid very low, uh, only the wealthy landowners could afford them. So this leads to a problem with economic and social instability. Latin American military officials uh, gained power during the struggle for independence. Um, they often continued to expand their power after countries gained independence, and they became known as cadillos, or military dictators, that were able to stay in power because they had the support of the military. Now, some of them were very powerful and ruthless leaders, while others were more reform-minded, and we'll talk more about them later on. After gaining independence, Latin America was free to trade with nations globally. Uh, they depended basically on exports, uh, but new forms of transportation, such as the railroad and the steamship, uh, helped build economic strength. European nations, though, uh, still continued to benefit more than Latin America from trade and economic uh, growth. The economy of Latin America depended mostly on European and North American imports. Now, due to this, uh, Latin America was unable to build up its own manufacturing sector since it depended on other manufactured goods. Latin America will remain a weak player on the world economic stage as well. Uh, they were unable to build schools or roads, uh, so they also they often excuse me uh, borrowed money from other countries. And when they defaulted on their payments, uh, the Western governments threatened to seize the money by force. An industry, such as maybe like a factory or a plantation, could also be taken over by a Western power. So this begins to start a new period of economic colonialism in Latin America. <clears throat> now, in terms of the United States, uh, after gaining independence, like we were saying, many Latin American nations struggled to keep their countries free of European influence, whether it be militarily or economically. Uh, so the United States decided to stand up for the new nations. In 1823, President James Monroe issued a document known as the Monroe Doctrine, and this stated that the American continents were closed to further colonization by European powers. Until 1898, the U.S. Uh, really didn't enforce the uh, Monroe Doctrine or any type of policy related to it. Then, 1868, Cuba declared itself independent of the Spanish. Uh, they had some fighting between Spain and Cuba, um, but in 1878, the island nation will be forced to retire from the fight, uh, but they still want independence. Uh, and in 1895, another war for independence will be started in Cuba. <clears throat> so business ties. The U.S. Uh, had established business interests in Cuba by the 1890s. Um, so the U.S. is looking to defend its business interests in Cuba. Um, the Spanish were also putting Cubans in concentration camps, uh, which horrified many Americans. Um, so in 1898, America decides to join Cuba in their fight for independence, and they also decide to join because of a certain event called the uh, the explosion of the USS Maine here. You can kind of see a depiction of it here. It was an American ship that had been stationed in Havana Harbor. Um, it exploded. Many people felt that maybe the Spanish had bombed it or that the ship had um, maybe... Uh, like maybe hit a, a Spanish mine. Many people believe the, the, the ship exploded and killed 
uh, the sailors on board um, and damaged and well, destroyed the ship and, and killed many of the sailors on board uh, because of the Spanish. Um, so this kind of starts a battle cry for um, the United States in the war against Spain. Later on, however, they will realize that um, they believe now that it was a, a boiler that exploded on the ship that caused the explosion. But again, it's still kind of unknown what happened, but most people agree that it probably wasn't the Spanish. So the Spanish-American War, the war really only lasted about four months, uh, and it took place uh, in the Philippine Islands, um, in the Pacific, and also on the island of Cuba. Um, and since the Spanish were unable to fight in two different locations, they had to fight in the Pacific and in Cuba, uh, which the United States was able to do better, uh, the Spanish will be forced to surrender. In 1901, Cuba will become an independent nation, and Spain will be forced to turn over control of Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Philippine Islands uh, to the United States. All right. So think about that in answering your questions. What changes and, um, or I'm sorry, what transformations and troubles uh, did the uh, you know, uh, Latin American countries face uh, during this time? And uh, that will help you answer your final question. Hope you have a good rest of your day and night, and I will uh, hopefully see and talk to you soon.